Hello and happy Thursday, everyone. I'm here with my co-host, Ricardo Borges. Ricardo, how are you today? I'm really, really good. Really good. Another another show on the way. Glad to be live again. We have a very informative show today. We have Chuck Salem with us today. Chuck, can you introduce yourself and tell us about your background and your experience sure. in community management and leadership? I have spent a large portion of my life in Las Conchas. My parents built their house in 1976. And fortunately for me, my parents were teachers, so I spent about 100 days a year there uh, for the majority of my childhood and through my teen years. Uh, I've seen it grow from, from basically, I think we were about 80 homes then to I think we we're at around 720 homes and you know, four or 500 condos. We... Um, uh, after I graduated, I taught for a couple of years, and uh, the long story short, my parents basically inherited a property management company, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to move down there, so I did. I packed everything up in my Lumina that I needed, and my sister took over my mortgage at my house in Litchfield. I drove down here. My parents bought a little trailer for $3,000 over in the Mirador up in the back. I lived there for a year and we just started creating the business. That was about 1996 it was. And we've been in business since. Uh, during that time period, uh, after 19, in 1976 and around 1980, the roads in Las Conchas, for example, were almost impossible to pass uh, or very difficult. You need, really needed a truck, four-wheel drive. I used to carry a rope in the back of one of our vehicles, or my dad did. I wasn't even able to drive. We were constantly pulling people out that were on the road. I thought it was bad now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, no, no. That was that was the the case. Um, we had no water. Well, I shouldn't say no water. The water was actually distributed in conduit, the old flexible conduit they would use when building a home for running it in the block. So there were leaks everywhere, and it was often infrequent. There was no power. There were no bank trusts. There were, it, we, we really had nothing. We ran everything. We had kerosene lanterns. That was our main light source back then. No air conditioning, of course. The rich people used to have these big colder generators that would run for 24 hours a day. What, what did so you we have had, uh, in terms of title back then? Uh, lease agreements or something? Something like that? You know, it was more like the, the green title that everybody talks about. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a very good question. And so, uh, fortunately, my, my father, he spoke Spanish. He was born on the border. My grandmother's uh, Mexicana. And so... He, he understood the language and his, learned, understood the culture because he was born in, born and raised in Douglas at the border with Agua Prieta. Hmm. So he became friends with uh, Augustine Cortez Sr. Who basically had given up his land to John McChesney. Uh, to develop. John McTessian was an American, a visionary. His vision was very bright, but probably a little ahead of his time. Unfortunately, John McChesney and his development, his whole idea collapsed. So as individual landowners without secure title or fidocomiso, uh, my father ended up with a dialogue with Augustine Cortez Sr. 
And after a couple of years of investigation, uh, Paco Manzo is a big part of it. He was working for Bonamax back then. And they came up with this plan of a Fido Comiso and the master trust, mm -hmm. which was probably one of the most important things that was ever done to secure, to, to secure ownership. Um, okay. Because really what we had was nothing. You could have been taken away pretty much at any time. But Augustine Cortez, as honorable as he is, you know, of course, oh, yeah, this is, we're going to do the right thing. And uh, so that's where the Fido Comiso, the original uh, bank trust for Las Conchas, established in the Master Trust, uh, which many of us still have and they're still honoring, even though it may have expired. And so that'll answer the question with the title. We really didn't have much more than a, a piece of paper which may or may not have held up in court that's a question so and then that same yeah the the next uh the other thing was since there was no power this is really where the association really started kind of gaining some attraction it was really just vecinos we're just all neighbors Gosh, it would sure be nice to have power. They all got together. They went over to CFA. What do we need to do? Well, we need a plan. We need to know how many houses are. We need to know the draw and all those, you know, those uh, engineering type questions. They got the questions answered, created the, the basis for the last conscious power that exists today. Uh, they brought it in. They Everybody kicked in a bunch of money. There were very few homes at that time. Brought in the uh, original power, and then everybody had their own hookup fees, and if they were too far off the road, they had to pay for that that connection. So, and then it became, then there was the water. Well, okay, we don't have water. And the city given its, its financial state, we knew it wasn't going to happen. So uh, one of the other vecinos, who was an engineer, civil engineer, his name was Red Carter, Charles Carter. He said, I'll do it. I'll draw it up. He was retired. And he drew up the original uh, water water distribution system that we use today. Keep in mind that the city didn't contribute one load of caliche, not one inch of pipe or valves or anything to the water distribution system in, in Las Conchas. That we were basically became the de facto developer without necessarily the rights or or permission to do so. We were just doing it as neighbors to try and distribute the costs among everybody and have at least some, some basic uh, amenities. So, and over the years, the association got bigger, stronger, and we had a really, 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 really good relationship with the city because the city recognized that the association was its partner. We were helping the city by doing a lot of the things that otherwise would have been their responsibility. So the relationship was strong until the last few years. I'm not really too sure what happened. I wasn't. I was raising our children up in up in uh, in Phoenix, so I was kind of out of it for a few years, and that's where we are today. We're going to try and rebuild that that relationship. So, that, Chuck, which was I, always have, I always have respect for people who take. <laughs> sort of non-paying like politicians and whatever it's kind of a thankless job to be a leader uh so you know you know you're walking into kind of a not the most pleasant situation what motivated you to take this role well there were two parts to it uh well i would say i would probably say three one i was raised as if you can do something as a civil servant you should not only did my my father 
uh, I don't hate to mention and keep repeating it, but he was. He was the, the leader as far as bringing in the power, getting the water distribution, getting the bank trusts, and establishing the relationship with all the mayors for years. But he was also the mayor of two cities in the United States. And he never drew a dime. He had, he had that in his mind and it, and it passed on to me. So my view is, is that I know that I can help the association or our vecinos, which is probably the better term, with my knowledge, with my experience. Uh, so I'm going to. The other part, one other part is that I do have investments there. It is a it is a matter of protecting our investments. And if we don't keep this association strong, our investments and our values will decline. Uh, one of the reasons that Las Conchas has the values as a, that it has is because of the infrastructure that we have put in place, currently maintain. And so I kind of lost, tra I lost track of my third one, but it'll probably come back to me. But those are those those are the main the main reasons. So, can you tell me how Lost Conscious HOA they work to maintain and improve the quality of life for the residents there and the property owners in the community? Yeah, I'm going to refer back to a little bit of the the history. If we did not maintain the roads, for example, they would be washboard or worse because it's constantly getting covered with sand, the water, and there's a really solid foundation to the road. That I don't think people really understand the maintenance that's required to maintain a road of Kalichi. Uh, there would be impass impassable, there would be, once the potholes start, they are very difficult to stop. Just like I used to live in Michigan for a few years. Once they start, they get worse, 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 and they expand. And then it costs a lot to fix them. So the, uh, the other part is the security. The response time, we are very sympathetic to the city of Penasco. We are very sympathetic in the fact that they do not have the financial means to provide the support that that many of us expect or want. So in in our own way, we supplement the city's uh, the supplement the city by providing security, maintaining our own roads. Now the here's where the sticky part is. The sticky part right now is water. That is on everybody's mind right now. Yes, as an association, we put in the water distribution system. We do not pump water. We don't have rights to water. And all we can pump is what we receive. Um, so that is, the, that is really the third part that we provide to the vecinos de las conchas is pumping the water. But if we don't have water to pump, there's not much we can do. Right. And so, in and just to, to further that, is that I know the city is really doing its best. We are in constant communication with Hector and Franco at OO Mapas um, and to, to try and help them help us and in, in, in this reciprocal relationship will hopefully help the city as well without going into details. Is um, that so, in your opinion, uh, is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Is it going to be better next year, six months, next summer? You know, I, I hope so, but we are preparing for the worst and hoping for the best. One thing that I do know, and this happens, 
Las Contras and the the and the city of Puerto Penasco is a victim of its own success. We are one of the most traveled destinations in all of Mexico. Yet we do not receive the funding from the federal government like they do in Cancun or Puerto Vallarta or any of these other places. We could really, in Fonatur, which is the, uh, it's a federal agency that helps bring in infrastructure and, and set up destination cities. It would be great if Infonatur would come to Peñasco and help put the infrastructure in once and for all. Because we've, out, we've outgrown the infrastructure that we have as a city, as a, as a, as a group. And we got, you know, Encantame Towers, we have, you know, Las Palomas and, and all these, and the city itself is growing. Um, and we got Sonoran Star coming in. We need more water. We need more water. And and I'm under I uh I understand that they're trying to drill two more wells. A lot of people don't understand, but these wells are 20, 30 miles away. Which requires pumping, more electricity, uh, and so forth. And, and a lot of the wells that we do have are old. The casings, we had one, one casing collapsed, which meant they had to pull the casing out piece by piece and reset it. So I'm very sympathetic to the, uh, to the financial standpoint I don't think there's enough taxes that the city could actually uh, put in. And I think we really need either the federal or the state government to come in these issues, as well as power. Power is an issue too. There's just not enough, uh, not enough kilowatts coming into Penasco right now. So that's, that, that would be very helpful if they could come in. So what makes us not get those tax or funding from other, like you said? Well, this would be all speculation. Right. We are, we're a long way from Mexico City. <laughs> um, and I don't think that Sonora or Puerto Penasco is gaining the respect that we deserve. Um, Cause we're not, we're, I don't, I, I don't, I don't really know how to pinpoint it, but I just, they don't, they don't, yeah, they just don't give us the attention that we, we need nor deserve. Maybe uh, we're too like I said, small. We're, what are, excuse me? Maybe because we're too small. But we're not small. Maybe well, the city, the city, the the city itself, the population may be small, but the number of visitors and the um, the influx of of money that comes in is very similar to some of the other major destinations in Mexico. So, I I, I maybe maybe we need to do more lobbying toward them. Maybe we need to make them hear us. Maybe they need to see these numbers. This may have been presented to them before. I don't really know the, the politics on that side. Uh, like I, once again, I'm just speculating. So yeah. um, this is just from, from my experience from traveling around Mexico, I've been all over it. That's probably a question for the mayor. <laughs> so um, when I show houses, I mean, especially for people who haven't been here before, you know, uh, safety and security is probably the most important thing to people when they're moving to another place, especially a foreign country. So can you speak to yeah. the safety and security in Los Conchas? Like, is it a, do you feel it's a safe place to live? Is there break-ins is you know what do you think 
or what's your experience? Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I lost you. Okay. I'm um, sorry, I, I lost the last probably 20 seconds. Oh, that's okay, I'll just repeat it. So when I'm showing houses to someone from, you know, that hasn't been here before, American or Canadian, you know, one of the most important things is that the safety and security that they feel, that they feel a community is safe to live in. So can you address that regarding lost conscious? Is it a safe place to live? Is there a crime in lost conscious? Is, can I leave my door unlocked? What, what's your experience? Is it better than it used to be? Is it worse? Is it the same? It is actually a lot better than it used to be. But many of them are resolved. Many of them are found uh, primarily because we do have guards. We have 15 guards. We patrol the beach. We're constantly patrolling the main road, keeping an eye out. We know we basically know who belongs and who doesn't. Um, it would be nice if we had our, our guard gate back, which is which did not prevent people from going in. It was more of a deterrent to let people know that they're watching them, which unfortunately is no longer there. It would be great if we could get it back. Do you think that's going to happen? Um, but the, I, I don't, I don't want to speculate on that. I would personally, personally, I'm going to uh, hope for the best, right? And so that's a that's going to be a, a question that's that'll have to be answered by the city. That'll be the city's decision. Um, I hope that they would come in our favor, and I hope they would appreciate and understand the the importance of it, um, because it's not only protects people like us who who live there or stay there, but we are the largest employer in all of the city. Hands down. Oh, not just not the H, not the association itself. You got to imagine we have 720 homes. Every one of them has a roof. Every one of them has two or three air conditioners. They all have floors, windows to be cleaned, painting inside, outside. We have. I I know there's at least over 1,000 people that work and survive, their families are fed off of homes in Las Conchas. So this protects them too. So the, um, yeah, the, the, before there would be, there would be break-ins before we had guards and we just have to suck it up. Um, back then we didn't even, well, there weren't too many televisions cause we didn't have power and there wasn't satellite back then. But, you know, they come in, they take your stuff, and, and it, it felt pretty invas invasive. It's it's a, a horrible feeling. It's not necessarily what they've taken. It's the fact that they have come into what you would consider your private space. But, yes, I would say that our security is very effective, and we do a good job. Is it perfect? No. Is it going to prevent any and all uh crime absolutely not i would i would say it's probably more effective than any city in the united states we have very little crime so as far as that when i'm home i don't lock my door i don't i don't uh my half the time the keys in my truck at my house outside yeah, I don't and I know that. this is live and I know it's a broadcast, but it doesn't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not really concerned about it. Um, <laughs> once in a while they'll, they'll take, <laughs> they'll take a, I don't know, maybe a cooler out of the back of my car, but that's, I'm, I'm in town. But other than that, no, I feel very safe. Uh, I've never felt unsafe there in, in the 47 years that we've been there. Uh, are there any upcoming uh, projects or initiatives that you and the HOA are going to be working on? And your role, what did, do you have some goals that you want to accomplish with the HOA? Okay. Uh, you're kind of cutting out on me, so hopefully I'm That's not okay. cutting out on you. 
No, you're not. I just said, is there any upcoming projects? One of the things that's happened, we, I, yeah, I, I heard that part. Okay. The, right now, yeah, right now, I believe we go in this cycle where as an association, we lose focus of our scope. Our real scope is roads, security, water distribution. Those are our main focuses, and that's really it. We're not there to manage their properties. We're not there to protect their, their land. If it's a civil issue, they need to deal with the city. We're not out there counting flamingos. How many flamingos do you have in your front yard? So <clears throat> we've, we've lost some focus. So I want to regain the focus, bring it back down to a more, to a simpler concept, one that's more manageable because our goal is really to help everybody. Whatever we do should be helping all 720 homes, not just section one or section five or section two. And if it, and if it doesn't benefit everybody, it shouldn't, it's out of our realm. So we kind of have these little special interests that I kind of see kind of kick in and we really need to eliminate that because it creates division. So I, I'm trying to, I really want to get that out of the way. I also believe that we haven't necessarily been spending our money wisely. Um, I think we should be maybe spending money on, for example, I haven't mentioned this to anybody yet. Maybe we should buy a new vehicle instead of maintaining these 20 year old vehicles. For example, I don't know. I haven't run the numbers yet. Trying to get that, trying to get that condensed and, and see if it is, it, it might be better just to continue to maintain these, these old Jeeps, or maybe it's just better to just go buy one that's disposable in five years. I don't know, but uh, we're, taking a closer look at our expenses on uh, trying to streamline it, get out of the get out of the issues that we really don't have any business doing and, and just focus on the casinos as a whole. Oh, well, and as far as the, one of the other main goals is probably the most important is re reestablishing a strong relationship with the city over the last so a few several years ago that relationship came to a dead stop um it's very unfortunate i don't know what happened i wasn't present but i i believe that that strong relationship is beneficial not, once again not just to the vecinos of las conchas or to the city but also the the people that work and survive off the homes in Las Conchas and the whole, because we're a huge influx of, of money to the entire population. So if that relationship can be regained, I think everybody would benefit. So that is, that is one of my, that's probably the most important out of all of them. So I'm, I'm going to try and reestablish that. I really haven't had a chance to, <clears throat> I've been trying for the last several months, but now that I'm in, as as president, I'm really gonna moving forward real real strongly to try and reestablish it. So that's that's great news, very admirable. We have a question from Bethany. What about the litter and the garbage? Is she talking about the fact that we have um, relinquished our contract? Back to the city is because uh, maybe because I'll tell you we as a board we were looking at the numbers that the city 
had um, been charging us versus the revenue that we were receiving and the association was upside down financially, monetarily. So as a board is like, wow, this is a loser. So we had talked with the city, but their the legal position, I guess, is is not what we were hoping for. And the fact that I don't want to get into the minutiae of it, but we decided what we're gonna do instead of losing money as an association is give give the city they only the everybody just goes and contracts directly with oh miss Lim, the garbage company directly just like they do with the water just like you do with electricity just like you do with your telephone it's just another utility and just pay it on your own last coach is going to be out of it because it's really once again it's beyond our scope it's beyond what we should be doing so uh, I, I i have a feeling that's what her question was relating to so bethany bethany if that's not what you meant then let us know um else? hey chuck just, uh are any of the developments nearby or by las conscious helping the association or the vecinos on the uh Landmarks do you want to achieve road security, water distribution somehow? That is a great question. That is something that I've been trying to get some answers on the last couple of days. Actually, specifically today, it just kind of came up. I don't want to necessarily mention them, but there's one, two, three, there's four major developments in Las Conchas that do not contribute we lost him he's at the board what? oh there he is an iota not one penny So there, is there a plan for them to contribute in the future? Right, sorry, sorry about that. My, my daughter doesn't know she keeps calling. So <laughs> it keeps interrupting <laughs> us. So, um, uh, so they don't, even though there's, I think there's, I, I'm guesstimating there are three or 400 condos that are actually being occupied and used they don't contribute one penny to the roads. They don't contribute one penny to the water distribution. So we're all, we're paying for the pumping from our cisterns to fill their huge cisterns. Um, we also respond to insecurity issues. There are also a security issue because a lot of their, their people are on the beach, you know, they're doing fires and fireworks and all those types of things. So it's, a uh, it is unfortunate that we don't have the authority to force them to, uh, to abide by our rules or at least contribute, which is another reason why I think there's a, a good, strong relationship with the, the city in the, in the act of fairness that, they should be contributing and and i don't think i think sometimes the city the city is overwhelmed right now with water issues but i think they may forget that the, our systems and our pumps are not just providing for the homes it's also providing for for the three condo projects that are on the north side and the one at the end of las conchas so that's that's an issue and just one thing i was a fact kind of came to mind is that we maintain over tw i think it's 25 miles of road 25 miles yeah. and about the same in water distribution that's a lot of piping that's a lot of water and uh, i think people forget this the the look at the big picture that wow that's really a lot so, but, and it's unfortunate that the other, the condo projects, uh, they tap into the water system, 
and it's theirs. I, I am not the lawyer. This is something that maybe Ricardo may or may not want to answer as an attorney. But from what I understand, once the pipes are in the ground, they belong to the government. I'm not too sure which government, whether it's federal, city, or state. I, I don't really know. But once it's there, and if they get permission to tap into it, it's there. And it's something that, as an association, we do not have any control. So. Yeah, that's that's correct. Um, I'm okay. going to still... Uh you know, uh, the co-host here today, but yeah, the, the answer is correct. The, 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 the comment is correct. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have a comment. We have beach access points and construction sites with litter accumulation because we're so close to the water. It seems important to advocate for a cleaner loss conscious through education and signage. You, you know, actually, just was it oh, last week or the week before, that was one of the things that, as a board, we voted on. We have signs, because back in the day, we had signs <clears throat> that were periodically placed on the beach, and major, some of the major uh, uh, beach accesses, reminding them about garbage, fireworks, fires on the beach, dog leashes, and so forth, which is a city ordinance. So we're we're having those built. We're going to have them placed, hopefully, within the next week or two. I'd I need to get with our manager and find out where we're at on that. But we need to put those back in there. And one of the things that was brought up was that exact point about, about garbage cans, who would be responsible for them? Who is responsible for them? Is that something that the association needs to do? Since it's a federal beach access, is that something the city needs to take care of? So we haven't, we're, we're, those are a few questions that we're trying to, to, uh, to answer. But in the short term, we, we know. And I think what we're gonna do is go ahead and put some garbage cans there in the interim until those those uh, answers are those questions are answered so that we we do we do realize that and that was something that was brought up and we have uh, approached it and we didn't send it to a committee the board is the committee the board is the task force and we're making all the decisions right there right then and that was one of the uh, the tasks that we have addressed. The only thing we haven't addressed are the actual cans and the placement and responsibility. Well, that's good news, right, Bethany? <laughs> she always goes, she's my neighbor. She always goes and picks up garbage like a good mm -hmm. citizen. Um, let's see, Ricardo, do you have any other questions? No. Uh... <laughs> Probably just uh, uh, remind uh, you know the vecinos and people interested in investing there that uh, basically the uh, the HOAs that are collected uh, you know are necessarily intended to you know achieve those goals that the association has ever had. So uh, I'm pretty sure that's pretty much what uh, Charlie has. Uh, you know, as, as a goal to, to keep them coming in. Yes, yeah, we encourage everybody. We're, um, one of the things that happened for somewhere along the line, uh, I don't think it was really being broadcasted to the value of, of what we do. We're a nonprofit. We're just a group of people trying with a common cause and to, to maintain the lifestyles uh that that we 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 really would like so the contributions are, are very important yes yes they are okay i know we have some questions i'm just uh hang on I, somehow there's some 
technology issues here. I don't know why they're trying to type in, but it's not working. My guy is trying to work on it. Oh, well, while you're trying to get that, one of the things I, I must, I want to uh, state is that the board that we currently have is very active, very concerned, and really wants to do what's best for the association. Uh, they're energetic. They have great ideas. They have a really lot of, a lot of contact and absorb what they hear and and present they're great representatives and i think that's one of the things that's make as uh is what's going to be our success so everybody has a little bit per different perspective we don't all agree on everything we all respectfully agree to disagree but we we do generally come to some kind of a consensus one way or the other which is great uh, so I, I, I commend our board because without the board, you know, one person can't do it. I, I by no means do I want to uh, take any and all credit, but this is a group effort that is working really hard to make Las Conchas, the association, the Vecino, strong and successful. Well, that sounds like perfect community. Lynn, Las Conchas is one of my favorite places to sell houses. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Las Conchas is an, ex is an extremely special place. Find another one in all of Mexico. Find one. Right? Name one. There's not. Isn't it true uh, that Mar Marlon Brando had a place there? That's what I uh, heard. He, he might have. We've had several clients that over the years that are superstars without naming names. That was one of our things, you know, I always respected their privacy <laughs> and uh, you know, they come in and they leave. And, and uh, so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of big wigs in Las Conchas. Uh, Las Conchas is extremely special and it's important that we protect it. So that it remains special. Um, I, I can't remember who it was. I think it was one of the governors of La Perla that is the, La Perla de Cortez, and it is, it is a very special pearl of the Sea of Cortez, and I uh, really would love to maintain it. I mean, we're my third, the third generation of the Salem family is there, and would love it to go on for, for generations more for the rest. Okay, I got some questions. I'm not sure why they're not coming up on whatever, but uh, why are people being allowed to continue to build pools when we don't have enough water to flush toilets? We do not have control as an association of those things. We simply do not. Okay. Let's see what else. What yeah, that's a, I, I, that's a legal question. Either, you know, Ricardo can either <laughs> agree or disagree. It's, I think it's more of a legal question at this point. No, you're right. Uh, we, we don't have that power. Okay. Right. Hang on. I've got some more questions here. Uh, what about the drainage of flooded impassable roads after the rain? That is one of the things that has been addressed to me. That was one of the things that I, I'm kind of back and forth on. <clears throat> Typically, those things are a developer issue, right? But we don't have a developer. Right. So we, we got a quote on just one area it was nearly $50,000, just one short little area to create some kind of drainage and so forth. It's like, wow, this isn't going to work. We have six or seven of those. 
we're talking big money. So, like, some of them are house specific. If they're house specific, you just, my, my opinion is, you just need to take care of it. Create some kind of your own drainage, or I, I don't know. But, like, the entrance to Las Conchas, if it affects everybody, yes. And to be honest with you, how many days out of the year do we really have that? And I know if anybody's out there who's listening, they're not going to want to hear this, but it's really a short period of time. So until one, if the association were flush with money and everybody was paying, it would probably be something that would be somewhat easy to answer. But right now with the, uh, uh, deflation of the dollar, because we get dollars and we buy pesos, we, we've lost a lot of value, um, and a lack of confidence, trying to build some of that confidence back. That's why I think we really need to kind of focus. But it's not, it's not, it hasn't been forgotten, hopefully just delayed. Okay. Dave has a question about the roads. Do you think we'll ever get them paved? I'm an owner and lost conscious and feel we could all chip in to get this done. Well, see, there, where we go again, we go right back to support, involvement. Uh, we need we need a larger percentage. Like when we brought in the electricity, it was almost 100% agreement. There, was, there wasn't really an association. It was just a bunch of people got together and said, yeah, I want power. Are you willing to contribute this amount? Everybody they just kind of divvied it up. Okay. Every, my dad collected the checks, went down there, gave it to CFE, and boom, they brought them all in. So that's where we, we need to be. We need to be at over 90% participation to be able to get those roads put in. And not only that, we need that because they got to be maintained. Paved roads, they cost money to maintain because every couple of years we're going to have to come in there and put a, 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 a what do they call it, a, a coat over it, you know, and 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 to actually build a paved road over sand is even more expensive because you have to build a foundation, got to bring the AP uh, sand it, pack it, ABC, that whole bit. Once they're in and nice and solid then they're going to be a lot easier to maintain, but they're not going to be cheap to put in by any, by any stretch. It's not like they're going to come in and put two inches above that, uh, caliche. So I would love to, I would love to, to come in, uh, off of Las Conchas, at least up to the roundabout and re and rehab that paved. But yeah. I mean, we we need we need more to participation, more consensus. I would love to. I think that'd be a great project. Next project, continue the pavement from uh, the Glorieta to the entrance of Las Conchas. Maybe we do it in phases. Maybe we do another kilometer and another kilometer, another kilometer. But we've got to have participation from all. That and road, uh, there's the main road coming into Las Conchas would be. <laughs> It would be nice. A few months ago, there was like a small car could fit in that hole. <laughs> it was kind of scary. Oh, oh yeah, I always stay to the left no. because I don't want to hit that no. thing, right? Okay, I have no, a and, and it, it's I have sure. A question here: Why the security? Why does the security guard have to open it manually? The air valve relief along of Los Conchas. I saw one of the guys doing this. That's not healthy for the current water system because the air hammer inside the pipes is not going to wait for it to be relieved easily can cause damage and then more leaks. Why not replace it with an automatic air valve relief? I have no idea what that means. I hope you do. <laughs> I, I do not. That is above. I know where the basic valves are. I know the water system goes through. That is more technical than I could answer i think it would be appropriate if he'd like if he'd like to send me an email um i can forward that on to uh phil naylor 
Phil Naylor is the treasurer, and he has a really good handle on the water system. He has a a, a, a water background from where he retired from. But those specific types of questions, I cannot answer, but it's, it's a valid question. And I'd be more than happy to try and get him an answer. So if he'd like to just send me an email, I will forward it on to the proper person and maybe or maybe and ask Franco, who is with Oumapis, he helps us out a lot, and maybe he can answer that question. I, I am not qualified to. Your email is, uh, can you just tell everyone what it is? I'll put it in the post later, but. Sure, it's Chuck at ChuckSalem.com. Okay, so we had a comment for you. Excellent point regarding the other condos not paying for the water, etc. that we paid for. Uh, keep up the good work. Uh, if the condos are not paying into the HOA, it'll be a hard sell to get homeowners to continue to uh, support the freeloading condo owners. Am I seeing this right? Yes, yeah. I think that is, I think that is a, a concern because why should they benefit from our infrastructure, our maintenance, our expense for free? I don't, I don't necessarily want to use the word freeloader because it creates more division. There's too many people out there. Can you hear me? Did I lose you? No, no. So at this point. Okay. When you said there's four projects, so are you dealing with the developer still, or are you now uh, dealing with the condo owners themselves, their own separate HOA? You know, to tell you the truth, today was my first day. I got my got <laughs> my feet my feet on the ground about that subject. Okay. Um, I started enough. questioning. I I was like, because my my first question was, how many? condos are there in those four projects that are actually because a lot of them aren't sold yet not even not completed so i want to know how many of them are actually occupied occupied right, right. and just to kind of get a general idea of the percentage compared to the homes of the people that are actually paying so because i'd also like to present that to the city to show this the uh the scope like wow you know here we are, we're doing all these things, but they aren't contributing anything. How How is that fair? It's just a more in a matter of fairness. And uh, because doing a, a legal battle will not work. Okay, at least not at this, at this point in time. So I think it's a matter of, uh, like once again, establishing a relationship with the city, reasonableness and fairness. So I agree. I, I am not happy about it either, that they do not contribute. Um, I'm with them, but we gotta, we gotta start at the base and work our way up. And we're, we're, we're back at the base again. And I, this is along the same line. If the HOA dues are a hundred percent in the black with the vecinos in good standing still be paying for those condos that are providing no support. I think we can all agree that, you know, it's something that needs to be solved in the future. And it sounds like you got a good handle on it. Yes, it is not something that is forgotten. Um, I, I believe they should be contributing on a, a per bedroom basis, maybe, or a per unit basis. Somehow, they should be contributing. Um, we are not, we're not their parent, right? They aren't our seven-year-old son whom I'm still feeding. And that's kind of how I feel about it. It's like, what, what, what do you, come on, you're an adult now, pay your own way. And, and they're not, no, they're just still, you know, living in the basement. So it, it bothers me. It really does. But we need to get our, we need to get, before I start pointing fingers, we need to be, we need to have a, a, our house clean too. So. Right. Yeah. There's lots, lots of things to do, right? Yeah, there is. There is. There's, um, there's, there's some numbers I really want to take a really, really tight look at. 
like I said, make sure that we're spending our money wisely and that they're all justifiable. So they may or may not be, but until we, I get my hands really dirty in them all, and uh, uh, it wouldn't be wouldn't be fair for me to start throwing stones in a glass house, so to speak. Um, so I have a question for you. How long is your term? How how long do you have to get all this accomplished? <laughs> I have till May. I guess I I haven't really read the bylaws completely, but when I was elected as executive vice president, it was for a two year term. But now that I've moved into the president position, his position ends in May. So I guess I'll be running in May. So. Wow, that's not very long. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like, well, but that's, it's okay. You can well, just step up. Somebody has to. Right, and we thank you for that. I know you're at the border and you want to get home, so uh, thank you so much for coming on live tonight. We appreciate it very much and wish you the best. You're very welcome. If anybody yeah, and if anybody, has, if anybody has any questions, I'm an open book. Um. I'm kind of blunt, so <laughs> I I'm not gonna. I'm not. Right. I'm. I'm not the great dip, diplomat. Just send me an email or even give me a phone call. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Thanks again for inviting me on here. I hope it was educational for everybody. And uh, thanks again, Ricardo. It was nice talking to you. Thank you, and stay tuned next Thursday, you guys. We have a, a interesting topic. Topic not not so pleasant, but. Um, if something happens to you or your loved one, we're now talking Day of the Dead. If you uh, happen, if there's a death in Mexico, what exactly do you have to do? So we have Georgina, and she's an expert on that. And we also have someone from the crematorium, right, Ricardo? Oh, your mic. You're un you got to unmute your mic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we invited someone that uh, just need to be confirmed. That's the idea. Okay, super. Everyone have a great night. Uh, if you're out there in the cemeteries and whatever, uh, enjoy your time remembering your uh, deceased loved ones. And uh, we'll see you next week.